So there I was. It's how every great aviation tale begins. Greetings, everybody, and welcome. Repeat here, one of your hosts, and uh, I'm here with my other host. Fig. So good to be here. Fig, welcome. You remember the last show, we had a little bit of a talk about call signs, and one of those call signs was, was a gent by the name of Sleeper. Sleeper, welcome, my brother. How are well, you? I'm doing excellent. I am so privileged to join you tonight so thank you for uh, inviting me you had so many other people you could have invited but it was time to clear up my name well <laughs> there you it's go. good to be here with you <laughs> do i do i detect that you there's uh there's a little sarcasm in that remark meaning Ooh. you you don't quite agree with the way that call sign story was told well, no so- no i don't disagree with the way the story was told. i can't say that the story isn't true I'm just saying the uh, lead up to that, I'd already had to call sign for such previous debauchery that had happened okay. through, uh, through the rag. So, so there's, but, there's further truth, I guess, is what you're saying. Hey, one well, of the other yeah. call signs we talked about, I want to jump in on this real yeah. quick. Uh, we, I kind of left Turnip out to dry on the last show. We left him looking silly and naive, and, and nothing could be further from the truth, and both of you can attest to this. Uh, he retired as a colonel and was a graduate at WTI, which is – kind of the Marine Corps version of uh, Top Gun, except it's combined arms, strikes, and that kind of stuff. And he was probably one of the most tactically, technically proficient Harrier pilots in the Marine Corps when he, when he left. And uh, so I didn't want anyone to think that he was some kind of buffoon. He was, uh, uh, he, he was an excellent Marine and not to mention, he's one of the nicest, most honest uh, Christian men I know. And and he, he and his wife would give you the shirts off their back if you were in need um as, as long as you weren't trying to take them one of those places where you take the shirt off your back hey, <laughs> so, hey, you i'm know. just saying hey, so. just, <laughs> hey listen i i just thought of it i just had a flash i just had a a memory recall i've got to talk about it it's you can cut this out later if you have to at one one off or the both rails already been with with us Yes. Yes. So I'll, I'll be, I'll be quick. It was while we were in Hawaii on the way to Iwakuni, we, we, uh, we had ended up, it was, it was after a night out on in Waikiki and we were down on the beach. Uh, and it was, it was dark obviously. And we were in, we would take off all our clothes and stashed them, uh, under uh, by a palm tree. And then we were all in, <laughs> I know, you know, till you were there, we were all in the water, all in the water, you know, surfing, you know, body surfing and everything. And all of a sudden somebody says, Hey, what's that dude doing? And there was a dude on a bike that had stopped and this poor bastard. He, I guess he stopped near the tree that our clothes were. Yep. And then, somebody in our group says, dude, that guy grabbing our clothes. And so turnip, all I remember is to go get the clothes. Turnip is not going to let that happen. So he flies out of the water and he's screaming at this dude. And this dude sees this naked shaved head guy coming out of the water screaming. He gets on, he gets back on the bike and starts riding. And I just remember seeing turn of chasing this dude down the sidewalk and every you know every 50 feet or so there was a there was a street light or a sidewalk <laughs> oh light. my god he's so and white I could see this so dude you know he's and i could see this white ass running behind him screaming you come back here i'm gonna kick your ass bring us our clothes <laughs> meanwhile we all came out went over to the tree where our clothes were we all put our clothes on waiting for and here comes you know uh, later here comes turnip we're jogging back you know, because the dude outran him on the bike, obviously, and he goes, "Oh, lucky!" <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mistake. Sorry. Oh, God, no, I, I wasn't that. in that debauchery, but I did. We all heard about that one, so man, yeah, yeah. turnip. I get it with you. Repeat on turnip, man. I didn't. I didn't take that wrong. But uh, what you did on your first session, I, 
I think it's because when we're, we're such good friends and tight with each other, we will bust each other's chops with the greatest respect. But uh, I, I concur to. with you. But the call sign is a call sign. <laughs> right. Yes, yeah. That's it. I'll tell you <laughs> yeah. what. So just well, so he can well be earned. The, and, I'm not uh, getting naked. I'm telling you that right now. That's right. I tell you what, tough son of a bitch. Though that. you know he'd I get. That. We'd be having a few beers, and all of a sudden he wanted to start headbutting people. That man's got a skull twice as thick as mine. There's no way I wouldn't right. touch. Let yeah. myself in right. that mess. Yeah, no way. Yeah. No Did way. you ever meet Ivan Putsky? <laughs> oh, yes. that, is that the other side of the turn? Yes. That was, that was the meme. His that alter ego, turn. Ivan Putsky. That was the oh, yeah. Oh, you know how many times I had to pull him back off of somebody, and I was a small one in the squadron. <laughs> Dang. Hey, uh, I, I, I just had another snapshot video. We, 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 I have it on video that we, when we were in Iwakuni, we remember we would do those cookouts like on Friday and Saturday nights. And oh, you're was, talking about the rollerblading lady? Yes. No, I'm not talking about the rollerblading lady in specific, but I, I'm talking about turnip. Remember cheese? Yeah. Yeah. Bad crab. Yeah. Remember, he's Absolutely. a big dude. He's big dude. Turnip. Yeah. He's bigger than turnip. Big, oh, dude, he was big. He was just a yeah. big man, big human, right? Well, on the video, of course, there may have been a little alcohol involved, and I'm absolutely sure that there was. But there was a video where Turnip came and pushed everybody over. And that they was had Rusty. Okay, Rusty. There was, a, there was a, a, a couch out in the yard, right? Yes. And, right. and everybody was sitting on this couch, and the couch tipped over. Well, Ivan Putsky got up and thought it had something, thought crap, cheese did it. So they get in this big wrestling match, right? And so yeah. it's on video. I, it, I cannot find the video. I have that tape. I was the one shooting the video. Okay. Well, and I'm I still have, looking for it. I have, it. I have a copy. I will get oh, it to you. Okay. Because because I, what I, my recollection was there was about 10 or 12 guys standing around and right by that couch. And yes. they, were, they had their hands on each other's shoulders and they were singing some song that was booming on the box. Yes. And, and Rusty goes, Hey, watch this. And he goes over and, and tackles the group of 10 guys. It's and like they all domino. go ass over tea kettle over the couch. And they're like, yeah. what the heck? You know, and everyone, but they're all so slow and they're looking around and they can't figure out what the hell happened. And yes. so, but, but Rusty gets greedy. And about 20 minutes later, everybody he settled down and the guys are back right. in a huddle and they're, and they're singing and Rusty goes, Hey, I'm going to do it again. And he rolls in hot and tackles the group. Only this time they are fast enough to figure out who did it. And within about 15 to 20 seconds, Rusty is standing in his flight boots and nothing else yelling at those 10 to 12 guys going, it took 10 of you bastards to (laughs) to beat me. They ripped his flight suit and his skivvies off and he's naked in his flight boots in the street. Yes, 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 yes. (laughs) Yes. I've, I'm dying uh, to find that video. So if you've I got it, I'd love it. Love I have a copy, uh, okay. and I, I it may have already been digitized on the, on the, on the DVD. Yeah. Which, what so is, what, what, what we've done here is, is cut you out of the pattern here. So sorry. My sorry. No, 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 yeah. not at let's, all. Let's, 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 let's bring you in about your call sign. Because people ask, hey, do you, what's this call sign thing? You guys really use it? And as we talked a little in the pre-show, I, you know, I called you Jeff, I called you Chuck, and it, it, that's just kind of weird. It's sleeper and fit. Don't know you by it's those how names. we refer to each other. Yeah, we yeah. use call signs all the time, not just in the air. So who's watching these who don't know about the call signs? You know, the call signs, they, uh, you know, usually were like two syllables for the most part, yeah. you know, so use them. But uh, interesting thing about it, yeah, we'll clear mine up here shortly. But you ever run into somebody, you ever hear some really good call signs like snake or viper? No. Stuff like that. No, you know well, why? Because we had a those snake. We had a well, snake. Now, usually yeah. when you hear something that it's one of those that they've given themselves. Right. I got an example right. of, a, yeah. of a guy whose call sign I won't use, but I could give you an example. You could say, let's say his call sign would ditch, because maybe he ditched a plane in a ditch or something. Well, he changes command and then he changes call sign to uh, um, ditch witch. Maverick. <laughs> Mav, ditch witch. Now yeah. he's ditch witch, starting to sound better. Yeah. Next to pace he changes. Now he gets rid of the ditch. Now he's witch. And so usually when you see a badass call sign, it's self given. But the ones that are right. earned are the, the best. Uh, They're the best. 
spider, the dirt, the mud dog, the yeah. turnips of the world. Right. Like All right, Fig, let's clear this shit up. <laughs> clear it up. Clear it <laughs> yeah. up. Now the, now, the true of the story, if we go back, my recollection is, is you had a particular officer dancing on a platform with a young lady in Hawaii. I'm not going to say that the story isn't true. But there had to be somebody there with me, two of these intervals with me, that uh, would have to verify that. But the, calls, but the call okay. sign, unfortunately, has been, was, was assigned was back in by a guy that you both guys love and fear and honor, was uh, Ragu. You remember the oh, call sign, Ragu? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, know, you remember Ragu, don't you, repeat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ragu, for those that are listening, I had the most respect for him and a couple of those, those that were like the, the meanest looking, the toughest. He reminded me of, you remember the first Top Gun movie? You guys were kind of talking about that. Yeah. Maverick comes in for the, comes in for the uh, flyby, says, uh, you're not clear. And he blows through the tower. And who is that operations officer that basically lights him and uh, lights Maverick up and basically getting ready to take their wings from him if they're not careful? Remember that in Top Gun? Well, that I mean, the, sh- the shaved head guy. Yeah, yeah. What was his name? Remember? Well, that to me was Ragu. All right. If you remember Ragu, yeah. for those who oh, I remember Ragu real good. I got great Ragu, Ragu was just a fantastic guy, but tougher he's, nails. He's the only guy to successfully ditch an A4. Yeah, he had a scar on the side of his face. I think yeah. from that ditching where he ditched it as a wingman down out of Iwakuni, I believe. Yep. Yeah, got, he was trying to join on a boy. Yeah, got out of the jet. And uh, since then, you know, you kind of listen to him, but uh, I'll, he's the one that actually gave me that uh, call sign. I'll share that if you want it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why we're here. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's why well, we're sure. here. Here's we what I have. It. So I finished up in the rag. It was the night we finished up. And a uh, gentleman from another um, sister squadron by, we both finished up. We got an ATOP squall in the Harrier. So we're going out to the club. A little alcohol involved, a lot of alcohol involved. He was six feet. I was bulletproof. We were both invisible. Was it a Friday? Times are life. It was a Friday night. Of course it and was. It was, uh, it was debauchery, ugliness, the stupidity we got into. It just so much fun. Monday morning, a lot of alcohol. Okay, I'm Natop's call. I'm walking down the hall. If everybody can picture these old concrete block buildings with, with that linoleum tile in the middle, that if you just whisper it, it echoes. Because oh, yeah. I'm walking down, I'm as thin as a rat. What am I weighing? 140, 160 pounds. Ah. First lieutenant. And out of the back, I'm sure the voice was something like, Hey, Lieutenant Pratt, Skipper's office now. How it came to me echoing down, Lieutenant Pratt, Skipper's office now. That was Ragu. And that makes you shake. So you uh-huh. picture Ragu, and those who know him, tough as nails. I turn around, flip around, I'm going to Skipper's office. Boom, boom, boom. Come in. Walk in, and there – I don't remember who the skipper was at the time. I know who it was. It was Thies. I mean, uh, no, no, no. No. Uh, no. It, was it was Hawk. Yeah. It was Hawk. But, and yeah. uh, uh, Opso was um, Ragu, and uh, the executive officer at the time was uh, Asia. Yes. Our skipper at the time. So yeah. I walk up there, stay at attention, and I go, shit, this is not going to be good. Long story short, he asked, asked, asked that I had a good weekend this week, and I said, bad mistake on my part. I didn't give him an answer. I said, well, what did you hear? Bad mistake. Bad, <laughs> stupid qu- mistake. Answer a question with a question. <laughs> not, not smart. <laughs> what did you yeah, hear? And I hear, and I'm sitting there, you know, we heard you had quite a good time at the officer's club. Maybe you'd like to tell us about it. And I go, oh, shit, I'm f- screwed. <laughs> well, at the time I start telling what was going on, and out of the corner of my eye, I could see Ragu start smart, going to smile. I think, okay, I'm good. There's something going on. I don't know. Uh-huh. And so they start laughing, and I'm still a, not knowing what's going on. They said, okay, let's cut this shit. He says, we actually had a conversation about you in a board meeting. Uh, we were worried about you in the squadron because when you're at work, you're professional. You don't cuss. You don't do anything. Kind of quiet. <laughs> but kind of quiet. He said, but uh, – at, uh, what they didn't realize, I'm not a water walker. I had to study my ass off. I studied my ass off. I wasn't going to screw it up. So, yeah, I had to work. 
But on Friday night, it's time to party. And I did. And they said, we were worried. He says, we don't have a worry now. We didn't know if you're going to make it with us. He says, so next Friday, we're going out to the club and you're going to join us. And I think it's that time Ragu says, Bobby, you're a freaking sleeper. I think your call sign is going to be sleeper. Boom. And that's where it got. Unfortunately, I, I, I earned that too many times, which I don't. Yeah, uh, that makes complete sense. Don't, don't, don't aspire to hey. anymore. <laughs> It's all right. It's water under the bridge, sleeper. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. It was that the ragu throws that at you. I'm thinking, yeah, it's all right now in hindsight, but uh, it's pretty cool. So anyway, awesome. Well, were you one of the ones that got, uh, shall we say, detained by the military police in Yuma on the way to Iwa Cooney? Or were you there, Fig? Fig, you disappeared, as I recall. I, no, I was there. You were there. You were detained with me. I was detained. Who else was yeah. detained? Do you remember? Oh, I kind of, I feel like it was, I feel like sleeper was there and I feel like steamer was there. Gee, I'm trying, I'm putting it all together where we it, were. Is it Yuma. because it was because we of sent the, little pre- the junior Lieutenant to go get more beer. We were in the courtyard at the queue. We in the courtyard. The junior lieutenant to There's get more the problem. Beer. It, it was broad daylight, by the way. It was broad daylight. And we, uh, we did so the way it worked was it, it took four legs to get the airplanes from cherry point to iwakuni japan and basically split the squadron in half as i recall and the first two legs were flown cherry point to yuma yuma to honolulu yeah. and then those pilots that that rode on the kc-10 tanker to honolulu then flew the airplanes from honolulu to wake island and wake island on iwakuni i was yeah. a second batch because i went from yeah. I, I stopped in uh, Wake Island there and then Wake Island on the way back. So, yeah. Okay. So, so I wasn't uh, arrested with you two guys. Oh, uh, well, there you no, go. So we were stuck in Yuma. We're on the way <laughs> out. Nobody was we're on the arrested. way there and we're oh, going, did I tell them we weren't they, arrested. We were detained, something. Detained. but we're, okay. we're minding our own business. <laughs> we sent like a marriage. junior Lieutenant for, for more beer because we ran out. It was probably shortly after noon or so, but, uh, <laughs> We had, we had like 36 hours and we needed to, to get lubricated before we hopped in an airplane and, and rode the rest of the way to Honolulu. And, uh, so he, I remember, I don't remember who the Lieutenant was. It might've been hammer or someone, like, but it was, it was someone junior and they go walking off the, it, and they get to the end of the queue and, and mooned us or did something. And so we all stood up and turned around and mooned them back. And oh, okay. One or two Johnsons right. might have gotten waved. Yeah. And the next thing we know, these MPs come walking up and go, you know, well, you know, some gunnery sergeant staying here with his family and his 12 year old daughter oh, saw you that. guys exposing yourselves. And that it's like, not oh, how the, that man. is not, that is not how the story went. Let me clarify for you. Okay, that. good. If you got a better that memory, than that, clean that up, I, clean that up. Not, you, you've got two stories. Because the one about the family at the BOQ, that had nothing to do with that. That had to do with a gentleman called Repeat. Let's get this straight. Well, right? You saw me. You can't prove a thing. <laughs> well, that's true. But it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't such a – so, yeah, here we are. The debauchery. It was in the daytime at the BOQ. Yeah. In, and you know, the courtyard. You know what flat earthers are? These guys that believe the earth is flat. You know why? You know what they're – how they justify or how they claim their proof that the earth is flat. They claim it because in a given day, they can see the sun and the moon in the same sky. That's why they can say it. They call them flat earthers. So we're at BOQ. We're walking over to get some beer and we're busting the chops out of this. I guess he's a captain at that time. Um, Up on the back, (laughs) repeat up on the balcony talking shit at him and all of a sudden he turns us into flat earthers bright sunshine he turns around drops drawers and show us the moon anything you might remember about that one repeat remember anything about that i seem to remember it was at the picnic table when i wasn't well, the only one but- well they, no the one that was at the balcony so we're cracking up thinking nothing to it until uh, later on there was a uh I guess a, a young family that uh, didn't appreciate the young ones having to see it. Cause we forgot. And shortly thereafter, I would say one of us was detained. I don't remember anybody else except the only one that got caught <laughs> up in the balcony up on his, on his thing. Um, and that's how I remember the story. 
See, but the funny thing is, is I I recall getting a a debrief from the XO like the next day, or maybe it was the day. Yeah, after. it was. Well, it, we it was, we we came clean on that. I remember that we went. You know, we can't hide this, and yeah, and this was the uh, tail hook Patsy Schroeder errors when, right. when people's careers were getting busted. It was uh, right in the heat today, of that. Or it was right in the heat of that. Today, I say. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it was uh, all right. Uh, you consider yourself uh, consider yourself uh, debriefed and uh, counseled, and uh, that shall not ever happen again. Correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. It's never going to happen again. We had a great XO. Go for no more time, lads. You remember? You remember what was what was the uh, Brigatti's call sign? Ginzo. Ginzo. Man, you couldn't get a Ginzo. better XO. No, that was no. That I, was, I, I agree. That is good. I agree. Gave us the biggest brief on uh, tanking going across there whatever you do don't don't screw up the twi- tines on those uh, baskets yeah. nobody did except one guy one that was that yeah. was Genzo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that freaking did it uh-huh. absolutely wow. yeah so so thinking of sleeper i got another question for you oh, um boy. we were in iwakuni and Wild, wild things occur, right? We're young, we're bulletproof, steely-eyed killers. Nothing can happen that can hurt us. And uh, there was there were a couple guys in the squadron, but uh, one that comes to mind was Rudy. And I, I probably went a good thirty or forty feet off a bridge with Rudy, and then that was that was my limit. But I seem to recall Sleeper, if he didn't go mid down. Yeah, certainly probably should have. Uh, but I think you went off a bridge a little higher than 40 feet. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do. I do. I think to this day, I think it, it, it affected um, my neck when I was uh, with Fig in the training command when you started having neck problems flying too many sorties. Everybody yeah, I remember problems. that. Rudy, <laughs> if everybody remembers, I probably weight all of 160 pounds. Rudy probably hit 185, 90 of pure freaking tight muscle. You could, yeah, he could, yeah, and he's probably two feet. or three inches shorter than you. Yeah, and he could, yeah. he could fall on a concrete from 30 feet, and, and he'd bounce, never get hurt. Yeah. So yeah, and he was a real gym rat. Absolutely. Oh man, he's just and just the the kindest, gentlest man you'll ever yep. meet. At the same time, you just don't find people that good. And I haven't talked to him since. It's been so many years. I know. I think Finn he hasn't is, changed uh, a bit. Does he look the same? Just Freaking the same. A, just an yeah. animal. A little yeah. more salt and pepper on his, uh, yeah. on his, on his uh, goatee. But other than that, he's it's Rudy. He's yeah. just as so, laid back as they come. Still, yep. yeah, outstanding. So it was always the Rudy and the Rusty show. If you saw one, you saw the other, and they had this right. little bit. Remember, they called themselves Itchy and Scratchy. It was That's right, yeah, Itchy, itchy and Scratchy. scratchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So if one went, so they always trying to find the coolest, newest stuff to do. So Rudy started getting this thing finding bridges. I'm gonna jump off bridges. Shit, I want to go with them. I'm gonna go do some stuff. Well, they got well, this a second. Bridge. You, you need to clarify. They're yeah. jumping off bridges into water. Yes, yeah. Yeah. into okay. water. <laughs> yeah, not onto the interstate. <laughs> but when they when those when those and this bridges, is in Japan. This is in Japan. Japan. Yeah. So right. they've got a, a little car, and they'll would spin it around. We'd all borrow it. But uh, yeah, we go out someplace one time, and I'm with them, and I'm we're like at this bridge, and everybody's going to jump. Well, not everybody wants to jump. Well, I'm not going to chicken out on this stuff there's no freaking way i'll die first and it came close and it came real close so here's the thing so we get one person to jump i'm thinking man that is that's down there but i'm going to do it so i didn't have shoes so i borrowed these shoes from one of our troops that was there with us put them on there and me and rudy are right there next to each other we're going to go one two three jump and here's how it goes it goes one two rudy jumps Crap, so I jump right after him. The problem with that is I'm falling. His vector is going towards my vector. <laughs> I'm, he, I'm a him, and I'm saying, oh, crap, since we're not jumping together, even if we bounced apart, it'd be fine. But now I'm worried that I'm going to land on him. And right. here's the thing. When you jump that high, I didn't realize you could take three breaths. You know, usually you go, <gasps> that's it? No, is it like three times away? <gasps> <gasps> It was freaking crazy. And so <laughs> what I do wrong is So how high was that bridge? My recollection is it was in the 80 plus. It was 130 feet. Oh, dear God. 
And I'll tell you why I know. And so I'm flailing now that I'm looking down and I'm thinking, crap, I'm going to land right on time. So I'm flailing like a bird. And the problem is Rudy, when he, right, when he hits, he crosses his legs, covers his junk, bam, pow, punches right in the water. I'm flailing, think I'm going to hit him. My head's looking down watching him. And when I hit, bam, it pops my neck. I hit so hard that the, yeah. that the, the guy's shoes that I borrowed at that time, do you remember the ones they had the clear view plastic around the back that shot the air pocket? It actually yeah. blew it out. It blew the pocket out. So you can <laughs> think they've got this on video and it's very embarrassing for me. And at this age, I don't care. It was very embarrassing because Rusty's got this. And they're pulling him in, and I'm, and you can hear me in the back going, going "Oh, <laughs> it's it's very shameful, it's very embarrassing that you got this stuff, Marine. I'm going to jump no matter what." And now I'm, they're pulling me out, yeah. and I'm going, "Oh, <laughs> it was bad." At least you were alive, yeah. and, and you were and, and so, sort of. It hit me so hard that uh, I said, "Hey." Uh, do we got to get, do we have a sortie today? Do we got to get back? I didn't know what the hell was going on. You didn't know what so, day it was. It was Saturday or Sunday, not. right? So your question is, did I go see the doc? I don't, I didn't get a down shit. I, I sucked it up and wasn't going to go do it. Um, did I go fly the next day? Absolutely. And what would it be? It'd be a, a 1v1 um, little air combat thing two hairs go out and uh, not, not an instrument sortie man jeez no no i should have done instrument sort but here we're coming in at the merge coming left to left and you know who it probably was with it was probably with bugs or somebody like that that i went out there with maybe it's lefty and we're going left to left so if you're closure in there we're, we're kicking probably 350 700 knots closure between us and yeah. as soon as we we hit left to left and turn i'm lost sight i can't turn my neck my neck is just I can probably turn it 10 degrees. I said, all right, let's set up again. Come in left to left, lost sight. I can't turn my neck. We go back and the, and the troops actually come out there and help me get out of the jet. Stupid. <laughs> stupid is as stupid does. Right on, man. You know, so what's the lesson learned? You know. Don't I'll fly after fly. jumping off 130 foot bridges. Bridges, bridges. Yeah. I'll still go <laughs> oh. out there and jump off anything Rudy does, but you know, man, what an animal he was. He was a fantastic. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, repeat just for a future reference. I, I just had a, uh, you know, a flashback when he said the doc, I was thinking about our flight surgeon on that, on that deployment. Oh, and doc. Uh, it, it all, made me all docs remember, call signs yeah. are doc, by the way. And lovingly referred yeah, to and it as made quacks. me think. It made me think of the cigarette burn that I had in a one region that came from Rusty the McDonald's. stop in Hawaii. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and so that's going to be a. Uh, we'll have to talk about it on a different on a different episode because that's a. Uh, it's a unique story. But, Repeat uh, I was telling you earlier that uh, I've got a lot of stories on Fig. Whoa! And I can't tell them. You know, that, we we're talking good. about mutual self destruction. He's got yeah. enough on me that. Uh, I don't know if some of them can be publicized. They can't even, you could, I guess you could talk it in code. It'd be, it'd be confusing. The statute of limitations is up on most of this. Well, was the cigarette, one, hey, was the cigarette burn one of them? It, it is one of them. The cigarette because I've burn. told that story in public on many occasions and nobody it, it, really understands or it, believes it can, how that it, can happen. It, I can, I'm going to throw out some code words to you. We're going to do right. cigarette burn. We're going to talk about hot dogs, shitty hot dogs. We're going to talk about, we're going to talk about fruit bowls. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk about cigarette burns on the assholes. It sounds like we better so have. Repeat's uh, going to pitch out of this fight. And just it listen. sounds like, <laughs> hey, we better have sleeper. We better have sleeper gonna, back on at yeah. another time. There you go. I'm going to be at the high first I'm for that one. Tell you, let me tell you something about fig right now. Here's something I learned about fig. One thing you do is uh, if you want to play a practical joke on fig, you don't let him know. To this day, there are practical jokes that I have pulled that I will never let Fig know because he will repay in kind tenfold. And that is the truth. There's one particular instance that we know that, uh, no, it's just more shit stories yeah, that we well. can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. We'll roll into this. We'll get you back. Roll into this those. is cracking me up. You guys are okay. Yeah. <laughs> Man. So, all right. So, the, it, that's about being a pilot and squatter, um, flying. 
so after after uh, Harriers, you, well, after the flight school, obviously you went to Harriers. You went through um, uh, the Rag and the, the Gun Squadron with us. And uh, did you go to Kingsville right away to be an instructor? We did. But, yeah, okay. we, um, we had uh, a good group of us. It's uh, we had a bunch. And of the community squadron. takes care of us, and we could at the time. I don't know if we saw the right on the wall, but we knew for some of us signed to go do something else. And uh, you get one gentleman down there and. And one of the places they could have enough pull to pull the rest of us down there. So a lot of us headed down towards uh, Kingsville, Scooter and Fig, myself, Steamer, Rusty. Rusty. Um, yeah, yeah, a couple others from uh, Sister Squadrons around the area were down oh, in Kingsville. Awesome. And just, uh, we, had, we had a pretty good contingent. It was a, a area of representation. And after well, that, it needed to be. I mean, that was a problem when I was, uh, well, probably when you were in flight school too, there, there weren't there a nobody. whole lot of Harrier guys. There were a lot of no. A4 guys and A6 guys teaching, right? But very few V-Stall guys. Right. Um, the one guy, uh, there was truck. Uh, did you guys go through Beville? Either you go through Beville? Meridian. I yeah. I went to Beville. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Cause, uh, truck was there. Mark McCluskey. Um, don't remember. Don't remember yeah. truck. He, he's about to retire from the majors himself. Um, I ran into him in Dubai about three weeks before the Harry reunion. Really good guy. Wild man, lots of fun, always good in the airplane and, and just a really solid instructor. So those are some good experiences. Um, and so when I went to teach in the Harriers, I tried to be the kind of instructor like he was. And, and I'm, so I'm going to ask you guys, uh, how did you like instructing? And was there anything that, uh, you know, how, how did you approach instructing? And what, what was the wildest, funniest, scariest, or best thing you saw? It, it, did any of those words jog anything in there? What, what was the scariest or, or the funniest thing that you saw as an instructor? Well, let me just start. Let me just start by saying that I, 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 my, my goal when I went to be an instructor was to be the guy that I wanted to have as an instructor. You know, there was always one or two guys that you flew with. You're like, you know, this dude is so cool to fly with. He actually taught me stuff and he didn't treat me like a, like, like dip, a turd. Like a dip turd. Yeah. Like a dip turd. <laughs> so that was my goal. My goal was to be that, that guy, uh, that guy that would disarm you, not put you in your place, so to speak, but disarm you and teach you something. Right. And so that, that was my goal. How about you sleeper? Identical. I think, uh, I think the group that went down there did, in fact, have that mentality. We've all gone through different training commands uh, in the majors everywhere. That you've got those few individuals that you feel like they're there to trite you more than they are to teach you. And I think we took the attitude. What was nice, we had so many Marines down there that a lot of us took over department heads and leadership positions. And the mentality is there: if you've already made it through primary, intermediate, now you're in advanced. You know how to fly. Our goal is to make you great. Matter of fact, it got to the point, I didn't even want to give people piss ant call signs. I want to give them tough, tough call signs. I mean, they, you've earned it. You're there with few, with few exceptions. I remember we used to have uh, some time in this. Let's pick out a call sign who you think is going to be on your next guest. And let's pick on them. But uh, just I'll throw one at you. Steamer, we would always had uh, being on the, on the board, we'd always have to come and greet the new students. So, I came in either is either safety officer or Stano. It uh, depends on which department. And Steamer was, I think, running off at the time. So we'd have to go in there. And we'd before we'd go in, say, who's going to be a good cop? Who's a bad cop? And it wasn't a good cop or bad cop. But I'll give Steamer credit for this. We'd tell them, say, hey, you know, you work hard. You may not be the strongest pilot. But we'll get you through this program. You're going to be great. Uh, but if you have a bad attitude, and you, might, and you might be the best pilot. You're gone. And his famous words depends on who it was, who would use these, these words. He'd say, you know, if you have a bad attitude, I'll be the ringleader to the circus bureaucratian. I always remember those words by steamer. Beautiful. But, but, <laughs> he, but we would bust ass to really try to think that, hey, we got to make the best because where are they going next? They're going to a gun squadron. And that was, I think. Yeah, uh, we're think training we had, our replacements. Yeah, we, absolutely. You know, we had the mentality that, well, you know, in two years, we could be back in the gun squad and flying with these yahoos. So we got to train them right. Right. Yeah. I think we did a good job. Yeah. There you go. Scooter said we did a good job. S stick with that. Yeah. Your story and well. you're stuck with it. So, uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. All right, Fig, give me a Fig. What you got? You got, give me something. 
crazy stupid or something crazy scary. Well, you know, the Too funny thing is, is this, you know, students, students, just fly, we're talking about flying, right? With students. Yeah, let's talk about flying. Uh, you know, some of the, some of the craziest, stupidest, you know, events that ever happened, happened out usually on a weapons debt. Right in right, a bombing yeah. pattern. Guys, we had guys cut each other off, off for the first time in their life. Yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. and so you know the the, uh, the you know and I started teaching at A fours and finishing T forty fives, but you know the uh, the thing was you know you're 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 telling somebody you're going to hurl this thing at the ground at five hundred knots and you're going to keep it pointed at the ground because their whole their whole experience with aviation is this at, to, to this point was never ever ever leave your nose pointed at the ground ever right because the ground will kill you yeah. well now we're saying yeah you're going to roll in you're going to point your nose to the ground you're going to leave it there until the, the time is right and so you know it, you know that that very first pull is not going to be four g's it's they're going to try to pull the wings off so i would I would set the brake. I put my hands there to keep the stick from coming back too far. And, and there's guys that would fight me on that, you know, cause the will to live takes over all reason and they try to snatch the wings off, you know? So there's that. And I could, you know, there's probably a hundred of those events, you know, the very first time, the very first time, cause it's traumatic. I understand probably it was for me too. I just don't remember, but the, you know, as a, as a, as an instructor, you take out, usually three solos at the advanced stages of bombing, you take out three solos and you'd have to keep track of all these knuckleheads in the bombing pattern. And you, you know, there'd be never fails. Somebody would lose sight of one guy thinks he's got the right guy in sight and pull off, pull off target and cut somebody out. And the guy he's cutting out has no idea is being cut out because he's not looking in the right spot. So you're watching these mid airs about to happen and you're trying to give them vectors. Hey, level your wings, do this, do that. And then, you see a shadow and a flash come by your eyes and you realize this other kid just damn near smashed your head because he cut you off while you lost. Yeah. That happened on more than one occasion. Yeah. And that's why we go to the club and drink afterwards. And then you, yeah. And then you get to the, to the rag and, <laughs> and you do it at night, do night. Bombing. At night. And uh, Who the only that unsat was I ever idea, gave as an way. instructor uh, was when the, uh, for bombing was, uh, it was a night one and had a, had, had a student cut another student off in the pattern and uh nightmare and i were the instructors nightmare we walked back in the ready room he's like Are you going to give him the unsat or am i i'm like no nah, i'm the flight lead i got it but, you know so, so hey my... were you bombing under a flare yes or was yeah. it um okay tell me tell me how that was ever a smart idea to start with oh, let's, we're brilliant. Let's, yeah. let's set the picture here why, why are you we're sending guys out in... single seat with nvgs i mean you know night vision goggles right well, Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Yes. But here, this is before MVGs, right? We're, yeah. we're bombing at night Dropping and flares we would drop a, the target. a loom flare. Yep. Yeah. That would light the target area. So you'd roll in from pitch black and then go below, below the flare. And suddenly it's daylight. You pick a pause, pull up into the blackness again. Now your night vision is destroyed. And then, Oh yeah. Hey, let's all join up and fly back together. That's real smart. Why don't you get a toupee with some brains in it? Exactly. And uh, for terms, pickle is when the <laughs> when you uh, hit the button that takes the uh, the bomb off the aircraft. It's called pickling the bomb. So, oh, that's yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. The actually Some the closest the most... I ever came and sleeper. I don't know if you got any of these, but uh, uh, wasn't in A fours firing the Zuni rockets. Remember firing the two and a half and five inch Zuni <laughs> yeah. rockets? Don't Those watch, were so watch, fun watch, to watch. You damn watch, watch the rockets. Don't watch the whole time. Rockets. Don't yeah, watch the rockets. Do? You'll watch the rockets. The rockets. <laughs> yeah, don't watch the rockets. Cool. Is, is good advice because watching the rockets was fun. Yeah. <laughs> but the yeah, you're gonna fly into the ground. Why you don't watch, watch it is because you follow the rocket right into the target. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there's the there's the rub. So. But God bless America. Is that cool? Yeah, I don't plus, recall. Plus strafing. Yeah. Did we do loft bombing in a force in the training command or not? No, no, loft no. Bombing. Okay. no, no, but they, we did, of course, we did them in here. Dragon. So, did you guys yeah, remember yeah. uh, ever lofting your, your bombs and then rolling inverted and flying yes! formation? Yes, on yes, your yes, bombs? yes, 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 yes. 
so what you so, would do, people, is you, you'd roll, you'd fly in at the target at uh, 200 feet and 500 knots, and the computer would tell you, hey, now it's time to pull up, and you'd pull a nice 4G pull into about a 30, 35 degree nose up attitude, and you'd hold the pickle button down, and the bomb would come off when the computer said it was the proper time, and you'd get a little tone in your headset, and you beep. And all you had to do at that point was unload and roll inverted. And, and you could look up out the canopy and watch, watch your bomb. The bomb fly. would be right there. Yeah, right the there. bomb would be right there next to you. You're like, holy shit. I just did that. Oh, I got to get out of the way. <laughs> now you, you had that in the rag. I can't remember. Is that what you were teaching them in the rag? Air repeat? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. How did you stay there? I, I didn't get to hear your history after uh, 223. I know you got kicked in the teeth. Uh, so yeah, so I went to, uh, I, after I left 223, I remember sitting in Asia's office and him promising me he wasn't going to send me to, to a uh, ground tour. Uh, and I'm like, that works for me because I did a three-year ground tour before I went to aviation. Right. And uh, it was right. about two or three weeks later, uh, Luke calls me. Luke's the group adjutant. Calls me up and says, hey, uh, your name just came across my desk. You want to go be a tank battalion forward air controller? <laughs> like I'm like, Hey, you talking about Luke on our squadron, Luke? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah Luke. He yeah. he. When we got back from Iwakuni, yeah. he was over at Group in the. That's Ad- right. That's right. That's who got yeah. my orders down to Kingsville. That's right. Yeah. So he he called me up and said, "You want to go be a tank guy?" I'm like, "Oh, well, yeah, almost jumped no, on it, didn't absolutely he not." That that sound before was me sucking on a joint. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> so no, uh, no, not <laughs> doing that. Uh, and I go, "Well," he goes, "Well, your name just came across the desk." So. Uh, I'm going to go, uh, go talk to uh, the group CEO and see what we can do about it. So he did, he walked in and, and argued my case. Hey, this guy already did a three-year ground tour. And so they sent me from there next door to 203 to be an instructor. And so that's how I was, a, I was a Harrier instructor for two and a half, just shy of three years, um, which was, God, that was a lot of fun. A little bit scary now and then, uh, but, but a whole lot of fun and some really good people over there. And I was actually all set up to make it a career. When I got, uh, uh, the thumb was the, uh, skipper and he was up in Washington, DC at a conference. And I was talking to the monitor about my next duty station. And he said, yeah, I'm going to send you to the Pentagon, uh, for a three-year tour on the was IG that staff. Was that Vapor at the time? No, this was, uh, another gent. Um, I, I can't think of his name, but it's funny. He was my first officer about five years ago. We got to talking. I'm like, you're the guy that tried to send me to the Pentagon. <laughs> was he working over a group? Where and, was he at? Uh, no, he was headquarters Marine Corps. He was oh, the fixed monitor. monitor. It was pre-vapor. Okay. Um, pre-vapor. Yeah. Okay. And he, uh, he goes, well, you're the only major I can send up to, uh, to the Pentagon. I go, look, I've already done a three year ground tour. I'll be 13 years in active duty i'll be six years out of the cockpit seven years in i won't be able to be a squadron commander no one will hire me i won't be tactically proficient i can't do this for its career suicide um i said i'll go anywhere in the world for a year anywhere on the east coast for two years but i I can't do three years out of the cockpit and he goes well you're the only guy i can send and i went well okay um give me a couple days to think about it he goes well you can think about it all you want but you're going i went okay thanks he was really reasonable yeah. So I walked down so, to the S1 and I dropped my resignation on the unit diary that afternoon. And, and Thummer came back from, uh, from Washington. I walked in his office and I'm saying, Skipper, you know, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for me. You've given me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the director of safety and standardization, the top model manager, and you've done everything to set my career up on a great path. And I had to drop my resignation when you were gone. The monitor will not let me out of this. He tried to make some calls. He came back. He goes, now they've dug their heels in. So I, I had another it's probably three, like, I was gone three days. What the hell did know, you right? do? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I had another 350 some days as a, as an instructor. And then I became a civilian and went to the majors. Yeah, and they lost another great Marine. Unbelievable. Yeah. A lot yeah, of stories like that. <laughs> no, I was, I was curious what happened man. after that. I lost yeah. contact so. with a lot over and yeah, that's, oh man, the seriousness of it, the fun and the jokes is nice. But when you see, see that, um, Maybe yeah, it's so amazing, frustrating. Yeah. Amazing Marine. The, and that's that, that that's the like whole that. um, thing about the military that drives you nuts when you see that happening. It's called, uh, I, I always called it uh, uh, decision making by default. You you put off a decision until there's no other decision that could be made except this one. You know, it fall and it's like, well, yeah, I'm not going. So now you've got to find another decision. Not to talk about sister services, though. The, the fortunate thing about it is being a Marine is that when you drop that letter, you still went back and you flew for what, 156 days, you said? Right, yeah, so it had a year to get out. 
Yeah. Sister, sister service there, the Air Force. So oh. many conversations I've had with them that yeah, when they you drop ride the, their, you ride the fine after that. They 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 pull them out of the cockpit immediately, and they're done. Doesn't yeah. matter what they have left. So it's just it's we, a fear it's a fear tactic they use for the yeah. rest of the guys. Right? Yeah, but yeah. we've had some. I have to admit, we have some right there at the middle level, the company gray. I mean, the major above. You know, we've got some really great Marines that took care of us. Took care of us out of Kingsville. Took care of you, Absolutely. and unfortunately, yep. some at headquarters didn't. So, all right. Well, thanks for sharing that because I, uh, I, I didn't know what happened after that and the reason. You uh, thought through it a lot better than I had thought through at that young age. My, <laughs> my decisions weren't making. Or, or that weren't as clear, yeah. clear I was all as set to make it a career. Honest. I mean, I did 11 yeah. years on active duty. I was past yeah. the halfway point, you know. Yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah. Made sense. Yeah. Well, well, it wasn't supposed to happen, man. That's yeah. the way That's the way it works. Everything happens for a reason. Yeah. So, Sleeper, did, you, did you do the reserves and retire? Or? No. I. There are certain things I will tell people. Anybody who's listening out there. But I want to go back to one thing that you spoke about. When I came into the squadron, when did you go to safety school? You were a safety officer before I was. Yeah, I, uh, I did that almost immediately. Uh, I, right. Trip, trip was <laughs> so. a squadron CO, and um, I, I use this line to this day. Walk into his office. To, and, well, first thing I did was uh, meet, um, I think Greyhound was the XL at the time. and uh, Yeah, it was. Trip I'm, I'm, so I'm in the ready room, and I'm over there in Charlie's. And uh, uh, to, for for reference, two twenty three and two o three. That the rag you finish training and you go to your gun squadron. Um, two twenty three is literally right next door. It's it's not even fifty yards from two o three, and that's my new gun squadron. So I walk over there with my records, and I'm gonna hit, just drop them off at the S one, and then go home and be happy. And, you know, come in on Monday, it's a Friday afternoon, I come in on Monday morning, I'm good to go. And I go in and I uh, see Greyhound and he goes, oh yeah, uh, Trip's in his office. Just, just go in and poke your head in and say, hi, it's not a big deal. Uh, so I did. And we had a good conversation and, uh, one of the, he goes, well, you know, I can tell you right now, he goes, I need, I need an S4 officer. I need a logistics officer. Um, he goes, I love this line. I, I I'd rather have a sister in a brothel than be the S4 but I don't have a sister and I don't have an S4. So you're it <laughs> I'm like, ah, okay. Thanks very much. Yeah. And then thanks he busts that. my chops because I'm in Charlie's and I'm not in Alphas. He goes, I, I don't know about you, Marine, but in the Marine Corps, I joined, uh, when one reports to a new unit, uh, one does so in Alphas. And I'm like, I, uh, how I wasn't, I wasn't oh, really oh, reporting. Crap. I was just I'm dropping just, off my I was package. Told to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Apologies, sir. For, please forgive the breach of uh, protocol. <laughs> so, yeah. So I wound up going to the S4 and six or eight. Uh, Rudy may remember this. So uh, we were out at uh, Yuma on a heavy weapons debt and um, uh, trip got pissed at Rudy. Rudy was next in line for safety school. And, and Tripp and Rudy were, were, I think we were a red wagon wheel and, uh, they kind of squared <laughs> off on each other and it doesn't go real well. And the Lieutenant Colonel and the Lieutenant square off. Uh, so trip trip yanked his safety school slot and gave it to me. Cause I told him that's where I wanted to go to safety. That's where I, you I wanted to go. You yeah. wanted the stamp. All right. So yeah. there was a story. There's a reason Man. I was, I was bringing that up. Yeah. I didn't ask you for, for some nice quick story. Sorry. I got, <laughs> Do you got I, one anyway? <laughs> no, no, I did, but there was, there, it wasn't, it was because I'm getting ready to bust your chops is where it was going. Oh, so boy. boy, how we follow each other's past. So I'm finishing up at 203 at the rag and they say, Hey, you're going to 223. I'm thinking, well, all right. I don't know why I kind of find out. I know why now. So when I, when I get there, smart me and freaking on the training command, all this stuff, I real quickly put in for Christmas vacation before I go. Oh, repeat wasn't happy. So I find out repeat is behind some of this is what the XO tells. You. Yeah. He's got you coming over. You're going to do that. He said, Oh, by the way, um, you're going to be a media S2 officer and we'll be sending you to safety school. I'm going, Oh, what's this mess? I didn't have that kind of juice, brother. I think <laughs> I you can assure did you. have some of that <laughs> In fact, I don't know when you got there. I think I was still in the floor when you got there. But 
No, this you, has festered you, for 28 you, you years. Yeah, right? It's just <laughs> now coming out. No, no, Get it out, sleeper. Get it like, out. Let it go. I, <laughs> no, no. I got a great story <laughs> about integrity, about repeat and integrity as me being a young lieutenant, very fresh, probably one of the first sorties I ha- had coming in there. And repeat may not remember this, but I do because it says something about a man's integrity. So oh, we get to the squadron and uh, remember, I just out of the rag. So I'm flying all the time and you, you know, the aircraft too much longer in the squadron, depending on what time of year it is or the year, we may not be flying. We may be flying and your skills deplete and they may not. But when I first got in there, my skills were there because I just came out of the rag. We're on a, a close air support, sorry, a cast sorry. And who's my lead on this? Repeat. Oh, do you remember this? I don't. Oh, well, you'll like this story. It actually, it actually says <laughs> good about things to. about you. Now you, you will, you will remember it and you'll think, did I do that? And I said, yeah, you did. But the, the outcome is what's outstanding about it. So now, you know, I'm shit hot. I think that I own the world of six feet tall, bulletproof. I'm flying this Harrier and I'm feeling good about it. So we're going out there on a cast sortie. We come back in and I'm thinking, this is outstanding. I'm coming in. When you're flying an aircraft, you feel good about it. Um, I've come in spoken for the pad. And at the time, you know, if you, if you feel comfortable with the aircraft, you just, you just pull the nose up to stop it. Uh, for those who are trying to understand. And when you put the nozzles in, you could come in there a level or you can really just hawk that nose up and let the um, uh, aircraft stop itself, and then set it back down uh, on plane. Well, I didn't realize who was out in the pad that day was a uh, trip. And so ended up, uh, we ended up getting a debrief after the fact. And actually who he, who he debriefed, he, he debriefed the lead. He didn't, uh, I don't know if I got the debrief on it, but two things were actually debriefed on it. And the first thing was that uh, sleepers coming in too hot for a skill level. That was one thing. So that kind of slows you down. The second thing is uh, we're repeat. He was uh, earned every bit of my love on that day because this man stood up as a man. And he says, um, by the way, you need to tell Sleeper that uh, he released when he wasn't cleared hot. He said wings level and he released when cleared hot. Repeat in his honesty said, no, that was me. It wasn't Sleeper. I do that, remember that. Yes. And that was a man who stands up and, and basically he, he, he did release his, the communication is bad, but he could have easily just said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him, but he didn't. He I'll stayed. talk to sleeper about that. Yeah. yeah. But, he, but the man's full of integrity stepped up to the plate and he said, no, yeah, he probably came in too hot, but that was my release. And from that day on, he, from, I always thought repeat's got the biggest shoes that I had to feel after that. I, I remember that. I drew that, that to me once and, and I, and I, <laughs> my other favorite one along those lines was, I was out. Ed Green was Otto was the uh, was the oh, yeah. uh, Otto. For, forward air controller, and uh, I, I had it on tape that day. Beep, cleared hot. <laughs> Thanks, Otto. The and the beep Oops. tone was uh, your weapon coming off the airplane, right? You know, you aren't cleared. Yeah. You know, you can't release until you're cleared hot. <laughs> so I rolled in and released, and then I was cleared. So Thanks, Otto. Close. So close. Yeah, it was oh, there. Man. You knew it. You could feel it. Yeah, like you you gotta stand up. That was the thing, you know, right? About uh, you could make mistakes all day long, but just don't lie about it. Absolutely, it's just different world. Yeah. So my question is, what's uh, uh, what's on your? Go ahead, brother. I I I don't want to bring you guys down. Uh, Trips in hospice. Yeah. Is he? No. Where's he? Where's he? That man. Yeah. A a fine leader, a fine combat. He's out. He's in North Carolina. Carolina. He's out in North Carolina. Best, best CO, I, you know, ever. And, uh, you know, I, I, I went on a cross country with him, uh, Vietnam Cobra pilot, a four pilot, yeah. Harrier pilot. He was solid. Man. He, he was like your dad, you know, he was like your dad in squadron or your, or your uncle, you know, he'd look at you and you would think, Oh shit. Is this a good look or a bad look? Cause I, you know, he had poker face and, uh, but yeah, I, I like flying with him because, you know, he was the skipper. Number one, you always want to try to impress the skipper. Right. So we went out on a, uh, a one V one out in the whiskey area uh, out over the water. And, uh, I, I was bound to determine I was going to show, I was going to show trip 
you know, the kind of metal I was made of. Right. And I probably pushed the 500 foot bubble. Uh, my 500 bubble was probably really 125 feet or lower. It was probably hundred feet. And so <laughs> he, he would say, you know, in a left to left pass, you know, I was not going to give him uh, an extra foot to take on me. Right. And so I, my 500 foot bubble was pretty small. And he would say over the uh, back rail, he goes, geez, boy, that's kind of close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of words from him because I always remember just being a gentle giant. That's a lot of words. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he's just, oh, that's kind of close. That's all right. Okay. I'm trying, you know, I was caging my, I was caging my job. Hey, hey, good uh, man. Good repeat man. for those, those are listening. T- tell him what they're, what he's talking about when he's talking about coming so in. The bubble, yeah. So we go out and bubble. do air to air, air combat maneuvering. Um, you would call left to left or right to right if, if uh, the other guy was going to go down your right side. So you didn't ran, run into each other trying to make sure that you were passing on the appropriate side and uh of course as soon as you passed each other you would immediately slap on a bat turn as they called it uh, trying to trying to turn as hard and as fast as you could to put your nose on the other guy's tail and shoot him out of the sky and we had a safety bubble of 500 feet you got no closer than 500 feet to the other aircraft in that merge of course, if you were outside, if if you were more than five hundred feet, you were giving your opponent extra room to turn. Cornering on you. turn. Room but here's on the you. problem: Absolutely. what yeah. is five hundred yes. feet? Who knew five hundred feet? Exactly. exactly. There's the thing: it's a long you distance. You got to have a five hundred foot eyeball. And I think I the largest. Times. I think the largest five hundred foot bubble I ever saw is about 150, 175 feet. And right. the, absolutely, and, and there's the no smallest, way. I, I bet I, I I I bet some of my passes. Uh, you guys probably in the same boat uh, some of your passes were well under 20 feet oh, i mean oh, right there easy you're just easy yeah, yeah. right yeah. there easy and when you get 700 not- to a thousand knots of closure with a guy and, and you're within 20 feet of him in fact i went through uh <laughs> i went through his jet wash man and i went into a flat spin no i didn't go into the flat spin. <laughs> went through the jet wash of a guy one day and it thumped me so hard i thought we hit each other and i'm like oh, knock yeah. it off knock it off knock it off you know that's our and okay, you know, inspect the, you know, all my parts are here, all the airplane parts are here. Okay, reset. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> hey, I hit a jet wash so hard it snapped my, it cracked my neck, and I thought, <laughs> what just happened? Because you know, I was kind of hunched. You know how you had kind of hunched forward a little bit, see the weapon symbology in the HUD, yeah. and yeah. I was already yeah. under a lot of G. And yeah. I, I hit his jet wash, and it thumped the airplane, and yeah. I heard my whole, I felt. All the vertebrae in my neck crack at the same time. Like you went to a chiropractor. I thought, did I just break my neck? Yes. 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 Hey, Doc. Uh, Did you the other side now? Uh Nice. Well, dudes, we've been going a long time here. Sleeper, you have got to come back and share some more of this stuff with us. Absolutely, brother. I've Uh I've got some stories I like to play that I could say. Give me a call sign. I'll give you a story. Who's your next guest? Who's coming Mm -hmm. up? Is there anything you know? We don't uh, possibly send that. Um, Turn it pitch out of the fight, man. He, God bless him. Uh, hope to get Rusty on. Yeah, Rudy definitely. We got to get him in. Sinbad, a lot of character. If there's somebody that say second place and could tell a story, but behind Fig, man. I think Sinbad's it, man. And Gotta I haven't asked Greyhound yet, but I think Greyhound will come on. And and you guys can all attest to this. If you walked in a ready room to get a cup of coffee at nine thirty, quarter to ten on any given morning, and Greyhound was in there telling stories. You get back to work after lunch. That man yeah. could tell some stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. Do you got, you got steamer on, on your agenda? You got steamer on your agenda. We need to do that. If you touch base with him. I have not. I have not. I don't I don't know if I have steamer's call uh call info. I got I got his contact. Okay. Yeah. I got his contact. We'll get it to you. That'll be a character. Be a character. Gentlemen, so, it's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you so much. I promise you. There's some there's some characters out there. I was privileged to be in that squadron. When I say that, I think I was an average pilot because I was surrounded by greatness. And uh, two of them right Listen here, right, you. two of them right oh, in front of me. Man. I'm serious. Oh, it was it was a squadron of greatness. Give me we a were... chubby there, sleeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you I look forward to I look forward to having these conversations again, man, and hearing more yeah. stories from you because yeah. that that's awesome. Plus, it brings back great memories. It does, it does brothers. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys. All right. Well, in the meantime. Everybody, we'll be back next week with uh, with more stories, more fun, uh, maybe even some commercial aviation stories. Uh, tend to not be quite as wild, but some are pretty good. So in the meantime, gents, check six. <laughs>